are being conducted virtually by electronic means through WebEx webinar and online digital platform and streamed on the Toronto City Planning YouTube channel. Participants who have registered in advance will be able to make their presentations to the committees in WebEx webinar, which is moderated by anyone wishing to watch uh, the hearing may do so on YouTube. Okay, like my, okay, I wasn't on. Okay, participants who have registered in advance will be connecting with their computer, tablet, smartphone, or telephone, and have the option of participating via video or audio only. All participants will automatically be muted on entry, and when your item is called, each participant will be unmuted by the moderator, one person at a time. We ask that you mute your devices until you are called on to speak. Those participating by video appearance will be temporarily upgraded to panelists when your item is being held. During this time, your camera will be enabled and you will only be visible during your five minute allotted speaking time. At all other times, your video will be disabled and you will be reinstated as an attendee. Committee of Adjustment staff will share presentations submitted in accordance with the written submission deadline. Members of the public and applicants are not allowed to use share screen or any other panelist controls during a video appearance and the host will remove you from the panelist role if you fail to respect this instruction. Land acknowledgement. We acknowledge that the land we are meeting on is from traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabe, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the, Men and the Wendat peoples and is now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit and Métis peoples. We also acknowledge that Toronto is covered by Treaty 13 with the Mississaugas of the Credit. In accordance with Sections 45 and 53 of the Planning Act, 1990, as amended, this meeting of the Committee of Adjustment of the City of Toronto is called to order. The Committee of Adjustment considers applications for variances from the provisions of the zoning that apply to the property, permissions to extend or alter lawful non-conforming uses, and consents to sever properties to create new lots. Anyone in attendance today who wants to receive a copy of the decision of the committee on an application must submit a written request for a decision by email. Please ensure that you include your name, address, and email address because the Committee of Adjustments and the Toronto Local Appeal Body in the event of an appeal will be sending notifications and appeal updates by email. If you do not agree with the decision of the committee, rendered here today, you may be able to appeal the decision to the Toronto Local Appeal Body or in some limited circumstances to the Ontario Land Tribunal. However, the provincial government recently amended the Planning Act and generally removed rights of third parties to appeal Committee of Adjustment decisions. As of November 28th, 2022, only the applicant, the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing, Specified persons and public bodies, as its terms are defined in the Planning Act, are permitted to appeal decisions of the Committee of Adjustment. Appeal instructions are set out at the bottom of the decision of the committee. The hearing procedure is as follows. Call each item in the order listed in the agenda, starting at item number 17. In making submissions where an application is uncontested, the agent or applicant may proceed with a presentation if they desire, where the committee does not require presentation. Applicants are to advise the chair should they wish to address the committee. The committee uh, may ask, members may ask questions and then take the matter into the committee for a decision. Each speaker, including the applicant or their agent, will be given a maximum of five minutes to address the committee and the clock is on the board. We will comment when you're approaching five minutes and ask you to wrap up. When addressing the committee, please remember to start off by stating your name and address clearly for the record, and please remember to confine your remarks to the matters outlined in the application. The applicant or agent will proceed first to make their presentation to the committee on uh, applications where there's other people uh, present uh, and to make other presentations in opposition or with concern. Please note that the committee may not entertain revisions the proposals made at the hearing today, the committee may decide to defer the application if being substantially revised in order to ensure that the revised application is accurate and that all those entitled to notice of the application have been informed of the changes. 
Then individuals either in support or opposed to the application or with concerns will be invited to speak. Committee members may ask questions of each speaker after they finish their presentations. And when all speak, other speakers have finished, the applicant or their agent has an opportunity to rebut only those uh, issues and answer those questions were raised by the speakers. And that will then mark the end of the discussion. The applicant is then taken into committee for a decision. Uh, do any of the members uh, or staff have any declarations of interest to declare on the matters before us this afternoon? Okay, none to declare. So I have a conflict of interest on number 19, which is 8 to 16 Locust Street. The nature of the conflict is that I am a consultant for the Mount Dennis BIA and that address lies within those boundaries. Okay, thank you, Ms. Alderson. We'll make note of that. You can take a break when we're hearing that application. Um, okay, uh, no others. Okay, in that case, we can deal with the furls. On the consolidated memo, we have item number 22, but we also have uh, two other matters. It appears 17 and 19 as well. Well, 17 is a, looks like a city application where they didn't post the sign and Parks and Rec will now have to do that. And in 19, I think transportation has a list. Um, um, Mr. Chair, there's a, a revised transportation memo and uh, additional materials for item 19. Right, I see that in 19, the additional materials, we did have that request, but in the additional materials, we have conditions um, being agreeing to provide rates uh, in a certain uh, for the for visitor parking and resident parking respectively. Uh, but I think when we get to that, there is a bit of an error, Mr. Carvalino, on that. It talks about each unit rather than the total number. Uh, but we can get to that in due course, but we will be hearing that so we don't have to call that as a deferral. So let's just call, I guess, um, item number 17 is the first one. First one that we're going to be hearing, and the, and the first one on the uh, that came up, I believe, in the materials and the additional materials regarding the posting of the sign. Uh, looks who's the speaker for item 17? I'm just missing. Oh, it is uh, uh, Gene Eng or Michael Cook are the agents representing 60 Starview Lane. And that uh, is an application to construct a new community community center with 10 variances. Uh, in the additional materials, as I said, there's a email. Uh, it seems to be that this notice was not posted on the uh, on the part on the property. By Parks and Rec, so it's an automatic deferral. We also did have a planning email that is a matter subject to site plan control. The staff will comment in due course. And I believe there was some opposition and a site specific zone. Sorry, through no. you, Mr. Chair, uh, Michael Cook actually is a representative of the adjacent landowner. Okay, it looks like they had the same address on my list. That's why I guess I was confused. Okay, so he is the Asian representing and it's cut off. He's representing the adjacent, the landowner. adjacent landowner. Yeah. Okay, we'll find out when they we hear from them. And I guess he has a different ad address than the applicant, so the representative. They're not both a Davy. Oh, he's a Davies Howe, and, and uh, she's with MJMA. Okay, so let's hear from uh, Jean Eng. Yes, thank you. Just uh, apologies to the committee. We were not able to post the uh, notice in the neighborhood, so we need to defer our uh, our presentation and appeal to your uh, committee. Okay. Okay, so um, that's fine. Any members, any questions? We'll have to weigh in with Mr. Cook. Um, with respect to his client, who it looks looking at is um, 3035 Western Road, the landowner of that property, with respect to that. But it sounds like it's an automatic deferral, so we'll be.
be listening to this on the merits uh, another day. So let's hear from uh, Mr. Cook. Can you hear me? Can now. Welcome. Okay, I, I have. I, I do not oppose the deferral. And you're the um, you're the uh, just for the record, uh, you're Michael Cook with Davies Howe, and you are counsel for thirty thirty five Western Road. That's right. It's Damaris Development Inc. And, and coincidentally, I am in the same office building as the oh. agent for the uh, for the city. Uh, okay, I can understand the confusion. Okay, and, okay. So uh, you're right, and it was also at the bottom of the page was cut off, just coincidentally, also to add to the confusion. Um, okay, so you don't obviously object to the uh, the deferral in order to set the sign, and I guess we'll hear you have you back on the merits of, at a later date. Thank you, Mr. Okay, okay, members. So uh, motion to defer in order to post the sign. A motion for deferral. Um, but I do want to say that the design is absolutely fabulous. If I, if I don't get a chance to say that again, because I'm not here, I just wanted to add that. Okay. Thank you. Um, with like Mr. Comeric, you were, uh, seconding that you had your hand up to make the motion. I second the deferral. Okay. Thank you. All in favor. Okay. Uh, look forward to hearing about this application on the merits at a later time. Uh, when we get the notice uh, issue uh, dealt with. Okay, so the next application again on the deferral, I believe is item number, yeah, we're gonna go ahead with 19. That's not an issue. So I guess item number 22, 927 Dixon Road. Uh, this is to construct a uh, new eating establishment. It looks like it's gonna be a keg. We have a cover letter, arborist report, transportation, no objection. Forestry is looking for a denial. And um, D5 is in order for site plan control. So let's hear from the agent uh, representing the owner on this property. It's Milda Miskins, Miskinti. Um, that's the agent for the applicant. Milda? Hi there. It's actually, I'm here with Milda and I'm Andrea back of Genoni Petriconi Associates on the uh, speaking on behalf of um, the client for 927. Can you state your name a little slow? I have Milda on the list. So That's okay. Your name, ma'am? Andrea, spelled A N D R I A, and last name Baca. B is in Victor, A C C A. Okay. Um, first of all, can you, are you on a speaker or something? You think you can, uh, perhaps improve the quality of your, uh, sound? Sounds like you're in a closet or something. Ah, okay. Um, we'll try to give us a second here. Okay. So this matter is on our list as being a request by community planning to have this matter deferred in order for site plan control. Yes. Um, uh, what is your, because are you in favor of the deferral? No, we're not. We're hoping that we can continue with hearing the matter today um, and we have been speaking with a community planning and we understand that this deferral is a standard clause just prior to the first circulation of comments in the SPA process but we've been actively working with them and uh, they are comfortable we understand with the minor variances which are technical in nature the client really needs to push forward with their construction drawings and scheduling and uh, this committee application going through today is really important to that timeline. Well, um, okay. Members, any questions with respect to proceeding today in, in, in light of the community planning request for site plan uh, for the for a deferral in order for uh, site plan? I realize it often goes concurrently. Mr. Chair, we cannot hear you. Mr. Chair, can you hear me?
Mm -hmm. Mr. Chair, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, we're good. We're, we're good back. to go? Okay. Yes. Okay. I was just going to clarify that we had had several meetings with planning community planning as well to and even advance of our site plan application uh, to be sure that the siting and the proposal as submitted uh, deals with some of the concerns, if any, at the time that needed to be done. So we've done that vetting. So what do you would like to have it done concurrently? So you'd like to get this approval today. Yes. Uh, first, uh, any questions there is? No other speakers um, on this application. So they'd like to proceed today, which case we'll put you back in the hopper. So we just need an issue on the mo on motion uh, of the request by community planning. They don't have people attending their meeting to back up their requests or expand upon their requests. So that's all we have. We see transportation is, I believe, okay with this. Is that correct? I don't have my... Is transportation okay? Yes. Okay. Um, so members, any questions or um, on the issue of whether we should defer or hear today? In which case we'll put it back in line. I like in the hopper better. I have no idea where that expression came from, but <laughs> in the hopper, instead of in line. Oh, yeah. Old, I think it's an old, uh, old school expression, but I remember it. So. Yeah, we like in the hopper too. You liked it? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Is this not an existing use? Um, it's an existing use. It's an existing restaurant that's going to be replaced with a new restaurant. Same tenant. Same. Same owners. Same. Yeah. Yeah, because I, I I thought the keg was already there. So yes, the keg is already there and an active keg at that. Okay, so given given all of that, I, I have no problem with proceeding with this today. And okay. uh, if you need a motion, I'll do a motion that we uh, deal with it today. Okay, thank you, seconder for that motion. Okay, Laura Alderson, all in favor? Okay, we will hear it today. Thank you. Uh, for or against hearing it today. I didn't see Sophia's hand go up or not. And yeah, no, I'm I'm not in favor of. Okay, so okay, so we'll hear it today, the four to one, and um, okay, we'll hear from you soon. I guess that's the last one, so we can return. We'll get you in due course uh, as we our guests on to item number eighteen. So let's just find our spot. You have item number eighteen, which is nineteen Smithfield Drive. And it's an application to construct a rear second story addition to the existing dwelling. There are uh, seven variances. Let's get this plan in shape. Yes, yeah, seven variances. We have uh, transportation has no concerns, and we have uh, supporting materials with photographs. And the speaker for this application is uh, Kim, sorry, Kurt Glauser. Only speaker. Hey, uh, thank you, Mr. Clark. Um, yes, my, my name is Kurt Glauser. I'm with uh, Giovanni Tassoni Architect uh, uh, at uh, 185 Bridge Island Avenue. Uh, we're the architects of record. Um, and regarding this file, 19 Smithfield Avenue. Uh, it's located in South Etobicoke. Uh, the major intersection nearby is the Queensway and Park Lawn. Uh, the owners have lived in this house for approximately 15 years. Uh, they have established roots here and don't wish to leave. Um, the family of four uh, and a dog uh, are uh, outgrowing the small two-story existing home and wish to rebuild on the uh, property for their use. Uh, so the, the variances uh, that we're here to address um, are of two types. Yeah, perhaps we can get your presentation on the board while you're making your brief. I think we just need a brief presentation, but we have your, your photos on the board here 
in your materials. So we'll just get that up. Okay, thank you. You're going to uh, replace this house. Yeah, we the intent yep. is to um, reuse the existing foundation for sure. Uh, I'm not sure the walls will uh, be adequate to meet the codes and insulation values, et cetera. Um, but they are intent. Uh, so as I was noting, one of the two types of the variances, one being is to um, bring the current setbacks into compliance with the current zoning bylaw, since we are utilizing the existing uh, foundation walls and footprint. We're not going beyond that. Uh, the others deal with lot coverage, floor space index, and some architectural features. Um, the uh, item one was the lot coverage, is uh, 37%, while 33% is permitted. Uh, number two was the front yard setback is 5.02 meters, while currently uh, 5.65 meters is required. Uh, the third one is the FSI floor space index. It's 0.52 times lot area, whereas 0.45 is permitted. Okay. Uh, Sir, I don't think you need to go through all okay. of the uh, variances unless members have any questions to cover the major ones. They look rather modest. Uh, we don't have any uh, opposition from city departments or uh, area neighbors. Um, so why don't we just see at this point if members have any questions for you. And there doesn't seem to be additions with urban forestry as well on this. No. Okay. Members, any questions uh, for Mr. Glauser or is someone ready to uh, make a motion on this? Mr. Kamarak? Yeah, I, I have whatever questions I had were already answered. So thank you. Um, I find the application to meet the four tests and would like to move approval uh, with no conditions. Thank you for that motion seconder for that. Ms. McCluskey, thank you. All in favor? Okay, you have a unanimous approval. Thank you, Mr. Glazer. Thank you very much for your time. Okay, item number 19. Um, 8 to 16 Locust Street, and uh, Ms. Alderson uh, declared a uh, uh, conflict, so she will uh, not participate in this matter. Uh, this is to permit a parking deficiency to accommodate a proposed 37 story residential building, and there are two variances. And um, we have uh, we originally had a request by transportation to defer, we now, and the additional materials have conditions. And they're, they're set out in the additional materials. Uh, my question just to staff or to the applicant, when we hear from the applicant on this, it's Charlie Smith, is whether the, uh, let's pull it up in the additional materials, whether in fact the wording is correct or whether we have to do some slight amendment to the wording of the variances. <laughs> the conditions. Um, Mr. Chair, the, uh, the notice is correct the um the proposed uh resident visitor parking um supply that they're proposing um equates to the rates that are in the additional materials from transportation in other words you were looking at a notice of um what the proposed number of parking spaces are for use visitor and, and resident um, right. and they equate to 0.12 residential uh, parking spaces and 0 0.056 for visitors. So they, they're basically, <clears throat> excuse me, sore throat. Um, they basically correspond to each other and it closes the loop. So sometimes transportation will say uh, the variances are fine. Um, this is the parking ratio that we would recommend you condition it on so that it ties up the loop. Okay. So I just thought I read something a little wonky. Uh, I guess at some point on the initial transportation, or was it the initial variances? Mr. Chair, I, I think what's wonky is the um, the request, the state, the way the variances are stated in the notice. Oh yeah, that's right. It was the notice. Yes, 
fine. They're not you, they're not stating the ratio there. They're stating the actual numbers and they're stating it per dwelling unit as opposed to per site. Yeah, so it's just it's wrong. It's just wrong. So that was you, you agree there was it wasn't in the transfer, it was actually in the notice, which is worse. So that leads to the question to Mr. Smith and Mr. Carvalino, do we have a notice issue? Although, or is this clearly what went out to the public? Clearly uh, implying that it was for the overall site, not for each dwelling unit. On that, because you don't even say in the agreement how many dwelling units there are. It just says it's a thirty-seven story building. So, in terms of putting ourselves in the position of a resident that gets this notice or reads it on the sign, do we have an issue or not? Well, Mr. Chair, thank you for pointing that out. I uh, I did not. My, I didn't focus in on the for each dwelling unit. Uh, I think that it would be pretty difficult to provide 56 parking spaces per dwelling unit. Um, but you, you are correct. Uh, that is a glaring error. And um, we're in the hands of the committee if you feel that uh, um, that is uh, a notice issue. Yeah, I think it rather it. I, I think it points out the one fifteen to fifty six and the twenty seven to twenty five. So I think the uh, casual viewer reader may not even read it, uh, just read every word and sort of figure be able to figure out what's going on here. So I personally, as looking at what the reasonable man getting this notice or driving by a sign would be able to figure it out, even though it's wrong. That's just my opinion. I don't know. I'd be interested to hear what uh, others. Thanks. Mr. Chair, if if the committee um, is inclined to to making those adjustments, I would recommend that um, because the preamble says to permit a parking deficiency for the 37 story residential building. So it's the residential building that uh, is the, the purpose of the application. Um, then the, the portion of the variance that reads for each dwelling unit for both the required and proposed should be deleted. So that it's a project that um, you're evaluating, and the notice would the decision would reflect that. But we would need a motion to correct that. Yeah. So just take the four remaining words out at the end. It just will be provided. And stop. And, and required. So our required period, and will be provided period for both. Correct. So let's see. What do others feel? Uh, whether we should be able to proceed or not. Given that technical uh, notice issue, well, that, that fixes the problem. Um, I think my concern is, as a member of the public, if I were to get this, I would think it was nonsensical. Uh, Mishi or uh, Sophia, you, you know, I, I think people figure it out. I don't think anyone's called in to ask uh, questions. So that's the issue, whether we defer or whether we uh, to get it right in the notice or whether we proceed. Uh, I would, I don't know, we haven't heard from Mr. Smith. <laughs> we forgot about Mr. Smith and all of this. Mr. Smith, you're the agent. Hello, hello everyone. I'm anxiously was waiting to, to get off mute yeah. to, speak, to speak with you all. Um, For sure. Could we, could we put the, um, the document we just had back on the screen, please? And, and I agree, the, the wording at the tail end of those sentences is, is a bit misleading um, and, and an error. The intent was to have a total of 56 residential parking spaces for the site or the building as, as a whole. But I'm more curious to look at the, at the notes from transportation staff at the bottom of this memo that talk to the ratio, which corresponds with this physical, the physical number of spaces. So down here, it clarifies that the owner must provide the rate of 0.12 spaces on a per unit basis, which would coincide with that 56 uh, residential and then the, I believe, 20, 25 visitor spaces. So I am I am in the committee's hands to make those technical amendments to that wording in those first two pieces. But I just wanted to point out that these two last um, conditions noted by transportation staff do to a degree, uh, remedy the situation above. Well, it doesn't remedy the fact and the notice. So I agree with you. I don't think there's, I don't personally think there's any confusion. Uh, most people aren't read with their eyes and don't sound at every word and they would have figured out or they would have asked city staff what's going on because 
would have been thousands of parking spots. It said per dwelling unit, not per floor. It's a 30, didn't even tell you to notice how many dwelling units are on the property. So that's another issue. Uh, so just getting around to uh, you, uh, I'm going to make a motion, but we have to decide whether we're proceeding on that basis of the notice issue or not. And then let's get into it once we pass that hurdle. If that's so, right, just, sorry, go ahead. I, so I think we need either a motion to proceed or to defer. And then I, on, on, on reading it, I, I read, I just assumed that the dwelling unit was the whole apartment building, the way it was worded. And I think that's a reasonable interpretation. And so based on that, I wouldn't, I don't see it as nonsensical. I don't think people would assume it's nonsensical. I think people would understand that. And I would do a motion to, uh, to make the minor amendment and to, to, not to defer on the, uh, for a notice issue, first of all. Okay. Just, just can... for, for argument's sake, I just would like to state that for proper notice, for the notice mm -hmm. to be meaningful to the public, the building should either state the parking, either the parking ratio should have been stated or the number of total units in the building should have yeah. been stated. Okay. So anyway, we have, um, so the issue is, the issue is whether the public would have been misled. Ms. Reddick has made a motion that she doesn't believe so, so we should proceed to hear it on the merits and then quickly move to the merits. I need a seconder for that motion or the motion fails. Uh, Stan, uh, given your comment, um, I guess it's either wrong or it's or it's not concer of concern and whether anyone's going to feel on that basis. So do we have a seconder for that motion or not? I know Ms. Alderson is, uh, has a conflict that so she's not available. So do we have a mo someone to second that motion or not? Well, let's just move on then. So I guess, Mishi, just, are you prepared to, to push just to confirm, Mr. Chair, so there's no one, there's no other speakers aside from, from Mr. Smith. No, no other okay. speakers or no other uh, objection, objectors that I can see. Mm -hmm. I, I would agree with, um, with Sophia on this one. I think that it. Um, okay, so uh, all in favor, motion carries three to one then, Stan, you're opposed. So let's now, on the on the merits, now that we've decided to hear it, uh, I, we've actually been talking about it, so other than the wording thing, um, does anyone feel that this compromise worked out with transportation is reasonable or not? I assume, Mr. Smith, yeah, you're prepared to live with that condition, the way it's worded. Mr. Smith? Thank you to the host for, for unmuting me. Yes, I'm we're comfortable with those two conditions, and I'm happy to answer any other questions the committee may have. Okay, so... Um, Good segue. Any other questions uh, for Mr. Uh, Smith or is someone ready to weigh in with a motion on the merits? I don't have any further questions. I'm prepared to make a motion on the merits. Um, motion to approve the application as revised with the reduction in parking spots as indicated. I find it to be minor in nature and consistent with the core test. Thank you. Subject to the transportation conditions. Right. Yes, obviously. Yeah, that's what we're all about here. So, uh, which he says he's, he's he can live with. Uh, seconder for that. I'll second. Thank you, Ms. McCloskey. All in favor? Oh, you're in favor, Stan. Okay, motion carries unanimous on the merits. Uh, so you have your approval, Mr. Smith. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Clark, and all committee members. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. Okay, now Laura can rejoin us as we move on to item number 20, which is 145 Carrier Drive. And it's an application to permit a parking deficiency to facilitate the development of a proposed one story warehouse building. So this is this. Our parking deficiency uh, hour. Um, and there's only the one variance, a maximum of 30. Again, more is being provided than, than is required. That's the new flip over. You, a maximum of 39 front yard parking spaces are permitted. A total of 230 front yard parking spaces will be provided. Um, and that is the one variance on this application. And um, we have on this we have a cover letter and an arbitrage report and we have i don't believe we have 
Um, urban forestry opposes. Urban transportation has no objection. And you have the applicant's uh, cover letter. Okay, the applicant on this is uh, Adam Santos, agent for the applicant. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the committee. Uh, my name is Adam Santos, planner from Weston Consulting, uh, here this afternoon representing Quadril, the owners of 145 Carrier. Uh, the variance before you today is not about overall parking supply, rather it relates to the location of parking relative to building face size that fronts onto Carrier Drive. Um, the bylaw does permit front yard parking. However, it's it's only in a specific quantity. In this case, 39. Uh, the variance, variance on your screen is exactly what we're requesting uh, from this committee. Uh, through robust planting and streetscape improvements um, that are have been implemented through the site plan and through our landscape drawings that have been submitted in support of this application, um, we're of the opinion that landscaping, amenity space, improvements along the carrier frontage will provide a meaningful and, and sufficient screening and buffering of front yard parking. Now I've received and reviewed, reviewed city transportation staff's uh, report, agree with the findings, have no questions or comments at this point. Uh, today I do have a brief presentation, uh, should the committee wish uh, for me to walk through. Otherwise, I'm happy to answer any questions here. Thank you. Okay. I, I don't think we need to I see here that transportation is uh, it's okay with this. I think there's a typo I saw in their letter, but well, it says where there is no other opportunity to consider loading space, but the rear yard, the appropriate location for the required parking is at the front of the building as the proposed parking space will provide proper pedestrian and parking access to the office entrances. So what type of a uh, property is this going to be? Uh, this office space? Yeah, through you, Mr. Chair, uh, that's that's a great question. It's it's currently been designed for a warehouse, a last mile warehouse distribution center. And so if I could just pull up the site plan quickly uh, to the host, what we have is loading functions, loading bays, loading trailers all at the rear and passenger vehicle parking at the front. From a safety perspective, we separated the two um, and traffic staff have supported that thus far. Okay. So this is a single tenant, single use uh, building. At this point, it's unclear, but uh, I mean, it's, it's a speculative build, whether it's one tenant or two tenant or three tenants, uh, we would comply with the zoning requirements. Okay, thank you. Any other questions for um, Mr. Santos or is someone ready for a motion? Mr. Kamarak? I'm totally on board with this. Um, I believe it's minor. It um, meets the four tests and would like to move approval uh, with no conditions. Thank you. Second for that, Ms. Alderson, thank you. All in favor? Unanimous approval. Thank you, Mr. Santos. Have a wonderful afternoon. And we can move on to the next application, which was item number 21. Uh, 127 Mullock Avenue, Mulock, Mulock. Uh, it's to construct a one story rear addition with two variances. Uh, we have a context plan and two photos, and that's all we have. There's no other communication uh, on this one story addition. Uh, the speaker for this is Judy Sanz Soleil. Welcome. Uh, it's Judy Sansole. I'm the architect and agent. I'm ha I have a. I can do a blurb if needed. Let me know. Uh, members, would you like a presentation? We have a GFSI of 20 square meters and a depth variance of 0.43 of a meter. So both appear pretty uh, minor. And thanks for providing photos. That's always helpful to put things in context. So, uh, does anyone have any questions uh, uh, for Ms. Sansole uh, based on uh, the uh, what we have before us here? No one has um, any questions. Uh, 
to make a motion. And yes, thank you for those photos. Photos help. They really do. Um, I believe this application meets the four tests under the Planning Act and move for approval with no conditions. Okay. Thank you. Um, I'll, I seconded for that motion. Ms. McCluskey, thank you. All in favor? Unanimous approval. Thank you. Good luck thank with you. your story edition. Very minor. Okay. Um, Okay, did we already approve item number 22? We just decided to put it back in the hopper. I think we, okay, we have to do that one now. Item number 22, uh, 927 Dixon Road. It's to construct a new eating establishment with two variances, the number of parking spaces and the uh, maximum interior floor area. Uh, in both cases, you're exceeding. We have a cover letter, an arborist report, transportation, no objection. And we decided we're hearing this notwithstanding community planning's request. And we have a forestry denial. So perhaps we can hear from the agent on that. We only do have the one agent. And I think it was Andrea with an I replacing Melissa on my sheet. Yeah, that's right. So, um, okay. yeah, in terms of the urban forestry, so unfortunately, we. we so oh, sorry, right? You're gonna to have to state your name again, just formally for the record. Oh, sorry, I'm so sorry. So it's Andrea Vaca on behalf of the client from 927 Dixon Road, and it's uh, we're the agent, Janoni Petraconi Associates. Again, I'm here with my colleague Nilda, listed as uh, the applicant, so we're here together. Um, so in terms of the urban forestry, we. We uh, do have an arborist report, as you noted, and there are five protected trees um, that uh, are being removed that are in fair and poor condition. Um, through the site plan application process, the, the applicant, uh, ourselves, and the owner are fully willing to take any forestry conditions for replacement of those trees or cash in lieu. We did contact Urban Forestry in advance of the hearing the support staff didn't have a record of the committee of, of adjustment application uh, and unfortunately we didn't get to connect with hi and Jean, who's on the actual file but that being said as we as we said uh, there is some trees that are being removed just by the site relo relocation who are fully committed to uh, abiding by any conditions required by room forestry to go through what's needed especially in the site plan application process for those trees okay so just Stepping back from what you, Mr. Uh, Stan Kamarik, was asking you earlier, so it's already the keg is already in the air. Why is this called it? Why are we here? A new eating establishment with new saw? Is it just being re, re renovated, made bigger? Yeah, it's being. Or that's right. So it's being. Uh, it's an existing non-conforming use, and the new building, which is replacing the existing building, which has fallen a bit in disrepair, with additional area would allow us just to. Uh, make more up-to-date and accessible facilities for the public. Uh, yep. The parking um, the parking is, an, again, an existing non-conforming use of the same yep. number of spaces, uh, although we are making adjustments so that there are a greater number of uh, barrier-free accessible parking spaces and closely to the main entrance. We're also just uh, spending the time to make a better entrance condition a little safer than what's there right now. Okay, so if, yeah, so you know, the keg does a beautiful upgrade. So new Young and Eglinton was a flagship when it came in, and uh, old old locations need upgrading. So uh, okay. thank you for explaining. And you're, you're it's non-conforming. It's like you're exceeding. It's not like you're you have don't have enough parking. You have more than you need. So okay. uh, shouldn't be an issue. Any other questions, or is someone ready for a motion? Just wanted to come back to the trees if we could. Yeah. Um, I noticed from the site plan, so you're realigning the building. So are, are the trees that are at risk um, due to the building realignment or they do the reconfiguration of the parking? Uh, from the building realignment, the, okay. not the reconfiguration of the parking. Right, because with the parking, I mean, why not just leave the trees that are there? And Yeah, no, it, it, it has to do with the building realignment. Okay. Um, so in lieu, so we would need to do some kind of a, um, 
uh, I guess a forestry condition to injure then if you're not going to remove. Yes. Okay. Thanks. I assume there's going to be some replacement landscape plan as part of your site plan control, which is yes. that he was looking at anyway. So there'll be a new landscape plan um, worthy of the kegs uh, entrance uh, location. Uh, do, we have to, I forgot. do we have to put condition one and two or just two? I'm not seeing a city tree. There's not city trees, they're private. Yeah, I just see the private trees. And the number of parking spaces now versus what you're proposing, what's the change in number? No change in number. No change in number, okay. Just in what the bylaw, bylaw maximums. Okay, so just waiting for a motion. Um, I, I'm good to go with a motion unless anyone else has questions. Well, I, I'd, I'd like to propose, um, I believe uh, this is desirable and it meets the four test. I'd like to move approval subject to forestry condition two. Okay, yeah, thank you, Mr. Comeric. Seconder for that. I'll second that. Thank you, Ms. McCluskey. All in favor? You have unanimous approval. Thank you, Ms. Becca. And uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't unanimous. I'm not in favor. Oh, you're not? Sorry. I didn't see that. Okay, tarries four to one. Application has been approved. Okay, we can move to item number 2343 Mil Milburn Drive. It's an application to construct a new detached dwelling with an attached garage with one variance. The floor space index of 0.6 versus 0.45 is permitted. And the speaker for that application is Peter Druzik, we have urban forestry requesting condition two, and we have nothing else whatsoever uh, on file on this application. Good afternoon, committee. Um, I think this application is very straightforward. Can you um, say informally? Oh, sorry, Peter Jeruzik from Arc Design Group. My apologies. Uh, I believe this application is very straightforward. We've been working with planning department. We did have some other variances, but we worked with planning department to reduce them and just have uh, this one variance. Um, I would leave it to the committee. If you have any questions, I'm willing to answer it. My client just wants to uh, create a, a, a second story on his existing bungalow with an addition at the back and a little small addition at the front just to change the character, just to change the facade of it. So okay. I think it's a very straightforward application, and if the committee has any questions, I'm here to answer. Okay, and obviously it's considered a new build at that point based on the way the application was brought forward to us. Yes. Okay, members, any questions or is someone ready for a motion? I'm ready for a motion if no one has any questions. Uh, I believe this application meets the four tests under the Planning Act. It's minor in nature and is desirable. And move for approval subject to urban forestry number two, I think it was. Thank you. That's number two. Yep. Second for Ms. Alderson's motion. Ms. Reddick, thank you. All in favor? Okay, unanimous approval. Thank you, Mr. Jeruzic. Okay, next application is item 24. 50 Castleton Avenue. It's an application to permit one additional laneway suite in a new rear ancillary building for a total of two suites. And there is one variance. The proposed ancillary building will be used for living accommodation in two laneway suites, whereas the bylaw permits one laneway suite. Uh, the speaker is Paul Cronus, agent for the applicant, as well as we have the neighbor at 52 Castle and next, Castleton next door registered to speak as well. And we have um, site photos, cover letters, supporting material. We have buying decisions, I guess, previous decisions and uh, committee. Uh, one in 2021 and one in 2023. And planning is recommending refusal of this application. Um, welcome, Mr. Cronus. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair, members of the committee. I just uh, do a sound check that you can hear me. Yes. Yes. Thank you for the opportunity to speak to you today. The uh, 
My name is Paul Cronus. I'm a land use planner in the office of Weir Bowles and uh, the agent for the owner of the property. Um, as you correctly stated, the uh, purpose of the application is to permit one additional laneway suite on the ground level within an existing, uh, not an existing, within an, uh, an approved built form. Um, if I could uh, quickly take you to um, uh, the bottom left corner, it's uh, uh, plan A, 201A. Um, if you can move to that, uh, it shows the uh, uh, proposal that has been approved as part of the zoning clearance. Uh, that demonstrates the uh, build form that will be constructed on that on that site. You have the top level, which has an approved the approved laneway suite, and that is shown on uh, Plan A, 103A. So that's the build form. This is what you will see. Uh, the top level, uh, the the layout of the unit is shown on uh, Plan A, 103A, and the bottom uh, unit, the uh, ground level unit, which we are proposing subject to your approval to provide for one additional language suite will occupy what is now a current vacant space. Um, the built form, as you see, is permitted to go to a two story height at a 6.3 meter uh, limit because it can provide uh, the minimum required separation distance between the main dwelling and the ancillary building that you see there. So you need to provide greater than 7.5 meters. So this only works on properties that have the ability to have the depth and provide uh, the uh, setback separation. Now you've heard in the previous uh, applications on Gibbs Avenue and on Lawrence Avenue, all the interest that the city of Toronto has and, uh, and you share uh, from prior approvals to provide for additional housing units. And this proposal is simply to occupy space that would otherwise be underutilized for a unit. Um, there are no variances required to any of the standards uh, from a floor space, from a coverage, from a setback, from a height, from an angular plane, from a landscape requirements, or for parking. Uh, this built form, as you see here, fully complies with all those standards. Uh, so issues that are related to privacy overview um uh, shadow impacts uh massing uh density um are not in my humble opinion applicable when you're trying to populate uh, uh, a built form mr chairman uh you said earlier another application that uh, you not only consider uh what's there and currently it's a, a, a garage but what is permitted as of right and this is a permitted built form as of right and we assess the impacts based on that it would be different if I if I was before you seeking uh, relaxation, I guess, on setbacks on the height to permit this bill form, but that is not the case. So I won't um, repeat all the arguments that you heard from others earlier today, and and from me uh, on other applications on uh, on multiplexes, which were approved on this property and some others in the absence of the EHON initiative, and just for uh, 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 the uh, member Alderson, there was a question about. Um, about that initiative. It was actually approved by council on May the 12th. They've adopted OPA 646 and they've uh, enacted bylaw 474-2023 and the appeal period on that expires on June 13th. So um, uh, as an example, I would just, uh, just hold you because it uh, became obvious today that the property dealt with earlier for the second basement lane with secondary suite, uh, that will have permission as of right now to uh, provide a fourplex plus the two. So, um, but I don't suggest for a minute that you should be planning by, by numbers or an Excel spreadsheet. We're planning for the long-term future of residents of Toronto and to provide housing accommodation, which is obviously needed. Um, I do have, um, so in my humble opinion, the, 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 the proposal before you beats all of the four tests of the planning act. In terms of the official plan, um, some of the comments in the staff report I don't agree with, It'll take much more than five minutes to uh, provide you that, but I would uh, say that there is a site and area specific policy for language suites, and it provides criteria for assessment. We meet all that criteria, and that criteria prevails over the general. Uh, obviously, the zoning bylaw permits the built form, so we meet the intent. It's only whether we can go up one more. Uh, some of the comments in the staff report, and I, again, it's a very peculiar staff report, and I recommend that you read it. I don't think the word overdevelopment should be used in the context of a number of people. 
that will occupy a lot or a dwelling. It's used in the in in the instances of massing, height, overview, privacy, which doesn't exist with an existing built form. There was a suggestion that Chapter 4, uh, 415-30 permits only one language suite, but that's just an exemption, uh, sir, for uh, providing cash in lieu of parkland or parkland itself. It's not to limit the amount of uh, uh, but additional the additional suite will have to provide its required share of cash in lieu of parkland. Um, I know I'm running out of time. And yeah, if you can run, wrap up, please, Mr. Cronus. Yeah, so in terms of servicing capacity, sir, all I need to say is I just want to quote Mr. Greg Linter, the chief pilot of the city of Toronto, who answered the same question on this uh, from uh, uh, councillors that, that the real concern that we have around infrastructure planning have been in higher growth areas. In other words, where you see the towers and the mid rises and not across the city and our neighborhood. This is essentially a very small incremental evolutionary change. There's no concerns from any of the other agencies that this uh, this property cannot be serviced. And it's an evolutionary change or it's not sudden. Um, I'd be glad to answer any questions. I'm sure there might be and listen to the resident and make a submission. Thank you. Okay. Uh, any questions for uh, Mr. Cronus before we hear from the neighbor? Or comments. I have one too, Mr. Chair. Mr. Conus, how does this uh, application differ from the one that you presented to us in April of this year? Uh, yes, sir. The City of Toronto. Where, where you were turned down for the second uh, laneway suite? No, you, you have the wrong property, sir. That one was a twelve Batavia. This no, it's fifty Castleton. No, it was twelve Batavia, sir, and that's coming back uh, before you in the future. Fifty Castleton. There was no request for a language suite. Uh, there's also 21 Batavia that your committee approved for fourplex. There was no language this request for a second language suite, um, but 12 Batavia was refused and it was not appealed, sir. Uh, 12 Batavia. So just to give you the context, uh, you'll hear it again in the other presentations. Is uh, the city of Toronto deals with language suites and the main dwellings as a separate building permit, as a separate zoning review, and uh, and as a separate variance. So this is why you're seeing them uh, uh, at different applications at different times. I hope that answers your question, but the one that you're referring to was 12 Batavia, and we had that discussion of the five Mariposa context as well, if you remember. Okay, so so there, but there's an existing fourplex on this site, is there not? No, the committee approved. Uh, approved the fourplex. Like, yes, in February of 2023 through application. <laughs> um a 061 uh 22. as part of that application did you not request two laneway suites no sir no that the the request for a second language suite was done in the context of 12 batavia not 50 castle so there was no laneway suite as part of that fourplex no but i indicated in that application that there is a laneway suite that's being approved and I've said this again today okay. for that property, and you saw the bill form oh, that I so, showed so you. On so the you're part. basically asking for a fifth unit um, on that property right now. No, six. No, six. five six. units. Five six units. Six, units. six units. Yes, correct. Six units. Were, were, were the uh, the recent Ehan and OPA contemplate a maximum of five units? No, not necessarily, sir. You you just approved uh, an application at 204 Lawrence Avenue West where you have a secondary unit, two of them in the basement. And now as a result of the EON, uh, they're allowed. Uh, okay, we're, we're getting into an argument now. What we approved there was was four units, not six. But there's no laneway suite on that one. Right? Uh, no, there's, there's secondary here, here, units. Yeah. Okay. Here, I have a question for you. So. In February, we approved the fourplex on this property, on the main building. Correct. So this is is this a, this is a standard residential lot, which now we should allow three properties on the lot, three residents, provided doesn't you know looks like one from the outside. Uh, there's something special about this lot, this street that allowed a fourplex, correct? As opposed to, so my first initial reaction would be with plan I would agree with planning and say, look, they're pushing the envelope. It's experimental. We have one laneway suite here, and you're trying to push the envelope and get another one. Uh, the question is, is this a standard single family lot? 
or is it not? And the question is, I would take it there's no issue with the, that the laneway suite would have uh, appropriate size. It wouldn't be undersized or anything. I guess a one unit per floor. Correct, sir. And they, uh, they're very comfortable units between 750 and 850. The lower unit is larger than the upper unit. So it's all I'm saying. Yes. Yeah. I would think the only thing that distinguishes your pro this application from a standard application, which would be entitled to three, is that you already have four in the front. So it's a probably if they're going to accommodate four in the front, can it accommodate two in the rear as something different than a standard single family type lot? Because you already have four in the front, which already exceeds the permissions. Otherwise, or is it a question if you're just overreaching? And that community planning is right. It's going too quickly uh, in terms of uh, this brand new built form. And it's a question of the number of people that can account also that will be on this lot. And again, we still have to hear from the neighbor, which we're going to good segue right now. The impact on others living in uh, in proximity, whether that's reasonable or not. I, I don't know if you wanted me to answer that, sir. If you wanted me to. Well, yeah, that. let's let you answer that and then we'll hear from the neighbor. Yes, get a first hand opinion of someone uh, looking at having two families or two two apartments in a garden suite right next door. So as we have to listen to this, what this person uh, as as protected by community planning's position, that's what you're up against. So let me have your answer to that. Let's move on. Yes, to I'll, I'll I'll be very brief, sir, uh, because yep. we all know what the housing crisis is, and we all know yep. that every one unit is important to. Uh, to, to provide for choice and opportunity and, and housing. Uh, what I can say is uh, the prior to the variance approval in uh, in February, two units were allowed, and this was in the absence of uh, the EHON being adopted and implemented. And, and your committee, and I commend you for, for, for doing that and for the committee voting in favor, allowed four units, plus the one that you're allowed as of right within the exist with the within the bill form that I showed you. Uh, the real question comes down to whether um, we should have pr a proper use of uh, 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 and gentle densification. We know the people are coming. The question is, is this an improper uh, attempt to intensify the property by uh, allowing an additional warm body in, in the unit rather than parking a car that's no longer required as of uh, last year, and whether we should be uh, um, storing items possessions rather than accommodating people uh, and that's really the choice yeah well again like i said you have i think this is a different type of a lot but the issue is our as community planning is saying and we're gonna hear from the neighbor it's pushing the envelope too fast they're just allowed one garden suite or one laneway suite this is a garden suite or a laneway suite i can't it's remember a, it's a laneway suite sir Okay, so where they have one, you want two. I don't know how many are these multi bedroom would it be. Could you have one with three bedroom and you're going to have now two one bedrooms? So like they're two, they're two, they're both two that's bedrooms. A, that's a good question. That's a good question. They're both two. They're both two, two bedrooms. Okay, so if you only had one, would you make it a four bedroom? Well, if we're, if we're trying, if we're trying to provide choice and opportunity. Um, that would be the uh, most uh, efficient use of uh, a very finite urban resource and land. Right. Okay. So a laneway suite, uh, laneway and garden suites, whatever that impact is and the benefit, the question is now the committee is in the position of having and they have committee planning of saying, no, it's, it's too much. We've allowed one and you're trying to get two. So let's hear from the neighbor. Uh, who's going to be the most impacted uh, or one of the most people impacted by this of uh, having uh, this next door. Okay, so the speaker is Deborah Chandler at 52 Castleton. In fact, the speaker is Jeffrey Folds. I'm Deborah's husband. Okay. She, uh, this meeting has gone on, unfortunately, past the time that we were expecting and she had to go to another meeting. Okay, fair enough. So Jeffrey Folds. Jeffrey Folds is my name. So Okay, well. Thank you. Um, I guess there are a couple of differences. Uh, you were asking the committee uh, what the differences are between the proposal that was made in uh, earlier in the year and what we're seeing now. And the one of them is that the uh, the suite has been moved west in the area of the lot 
so that it's now uh, going to be roughly four feet from the edge of the alley, the paved alleyway. Um, and it's it's also right up against the fence line. I think you've got another view that shows the vertical uh, overview, plan view of the suite and where it sits next to the fence. Yeah, zoom that in. And you'll see that there is no setback between the north wall of the suite and the fence between that property and my property. And in fact, this is the view from the presentation that was made before. This is not the view that was attached to the notice of the meeting. So is that is there no variance for that? Zero lot line? for the garage well when this was discussed before and uh, mr cronus was asked about whether there was any issues with setback uh he said no and i i did frankly at the time i disagreed but there was no way for me to uh raise my objection to his comment so this this actually was missed the last time around So that's Same. that's issue number one. Uh, yeah. Issue number two is that the plan view from the the PDF that we were sent with this notice of meeting shows the footprint of the lane wave suite being moved west by four feet. Actually, a lot more than four feet. It's moved to within four feet of the alley surface that's owned by the city which is going to reduce the access to my garage by about five feet. And because okay. there's a telephone pole and a hydro pole shared service that sits on the west side of that alleyway, it's going to pinch the access from, from me being able to get into my garage from 18 feet down to 13 feet. So perhaps we can pause. I know normally we get, you know, you get make your submissions and we hear, but what's going on, whether Mr. Carvalino and or uh, Mr. Cronus can weigh in on what's going on here. Do we have, has this garage moved since the, it was merely a garage back when the fourplex was approved in February and do we not have some side yard setback issues here? So Mr. Chairman, uh, I can say, I'm categorically that this uh, plan, the plans that I sent into you are the plans that have been stamped as approved for a second language suite and location that is shown that is before you without any variances. The only variance that we need is to, to again, to put a, a warm body in the lower unit and it doesn't trigger any variances. There are no variances required or associated with this build form. Whether it was moved up, well, when I think the resident is saying it's moved over four feet closer to the laneway, that's because the parking's not required. And initially, uh, back then, the issue of parkings was still on the table. That's no longer required. So it could have moved uh, forward a bit, but that setback that you see from the rear wall of the laneway to the rear lot line on the west meets and or exceeds the zoning bylaw setback requirement. I guess you have, there were variances associated with this property in 2021. I, was that built, the one in 21, second story edition, about the existing two story front edition, new front no, portion? No, 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 that was not. You, you, that might, was you might remember, Mr. Chairman. But that was not, that was redundant. That was not built. And then the one in 2023 has been approved, but it hasn't also has yet to be built. Yes, you may remember, uh, Mr. Correct. Chairman, Mr. Comeric brought this point up. Um, uh, um, how do we deal with an old variance? And, and you know, we have the new one. The, the variance that was approved in earlier this year was just for the fourplex, and it had, enough, it had no variances attached to it in terms of density, height, setbacks. We work within the same bill form. Again, that's allowed by the zoning. All that the committee approved was the ability to go from two units to four units. 
There were no variances associated, no variance associated with the language suite either. And Mr. Kumerik brought up the point, and, and we may consider it, is why don't you pull that building a bit forward uh, to match the uh, the front of the uh, of the other houses? And you know, and that was a valid planning point. Uh, but there was no variances in in 2023 for the language suite, and no built form variances. I mean, for the uh, for the fourplex that was approved. Uh, the U value of two versus four. Correct. That's and that was done. Okay. That was done months before. The, uh, okay, so okay, so let's now go back uh, to Mr. Fultz to continue his uh, his his uh, submissions. Yeah. Okay, so um, I, I'm still a bit puzzled by uh, this plan view that we're looking at um, because that's that's uh, it's different from what I saw on uh, the attachment that came with the notice of meeting. Um, and I'll set aside the, the question of the setback on the west side, and let's focus on the setback on the north side. So the north wall of this laneway dwelling is right up against the fence line. There is no setback on this drawing. There wasn't when this was presented previously, and there isn't one now. So how does that work? Mr. Chairman, I don't know if you want me to answer the questions as they arise or wait for well, the full submission. Well, why don't we wait now for the end and let him, let Mr. Ch uh, Mr. Fools uh, finish his, his, you'll have a chance for your rebuttal. So, uh, you know, we're looking and there's, we have these copies of the previous decisions. So, uh, so, so the third issue that yeah. I have is, is uh, I certainly feel like I, I'd like to do what I can to support making space available for people to live in. Uh, but mm -hmm. given the size of this lot, I think the number of units that are being contemplated to put on the lot are excessive. Yes, yeah, so you think five is six? I, I, I was happy to support the yeah. previous proposal, but I think five is yeah. too much. Well, they're gonna get five. He's trying to get six, right? He's got four in the building. He's entitled to the one. He's here He's here because he's trying to get a second lane waste. Uh, Sorry. Lane I, I apologize. Uh, I lost five count. Okay. Yes, I, I was willing to support five, but I'm not willing yeah. to support six. Not in a lot of that size. Okay, thank you. So that, now I have your position, um, Mr. Uh, Tronus. Can we please have your rebuttal? Thank you, Mr. Uh, Folds, for your submissions, and I see you participated in the other matters as well. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Cronus, please uh, respond. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you again. The built form that you see here is uh, permitted. We are not changing any of the regulatory standards that would give rise to issues and concerns of uh, loss of privacy, loss of view. This is a population of the ground floor, not the top level. The top level has been approved. So, uh, and the issue of parking is not a relevant consideration anymore in the city of Toronto because the um, uh, minimum standards have been removed. So we're using space efficiently by providing the required landscape in the front by providing the amenity area for the residents. And um, as the city has found in Eon and, 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 and has, as they uh, pursue further intensification, gentle intensification of the, uh, of the missing middle, this is an appropriate form of development where there are no other variances. I may not, be, I may not have the same submission if I wanted uh, to increase the height, if I wanted to make uh, the, the building bigger uh, in terms of uh, reducing the setbacks. But the setbacks that you see, the height that you see, the angular plane, all those matters are permitted as of right. And really, we come down to the question is, what's the better use for the ground unit? Uh, and I, I personally don't see, I, I don't use the word overdevelopment in the context of too many people. I use it in the context of impacts. And whether it's minor, you assess it on the basis of not mathematics, but you uh, assess it on the basis of uh, impacts and there are no negative impacts sir okay i guess you're you'll be able to do this because you had your previous upper unit which you can now build as yep. your singular main way now the fact that you no longer have a parking requirement you're taking the previous parking spot which was below the laneway suite and now you want to make that a separate 
uh, two bedroom apartment as well. Correct, sir. And, and, and the city never can I provide, I provide zero parking on your lot because you no longer have to. I guess that's that's correct. Exactly. But you are running afoul of the fact that the city, in its wisdom, is allowing one laneway suite, not two. So, on that basis, let me turn it over to committee members. Any further follow up questions or comments? I'm ready. To come up. Yeah, just a comment. I I really believe that this is not gentle int intensification and not what uh, community planning is aiming for, uh, which is why I will support uh, the refusal of this application. I just wanted to make that clear. Okay. Um, Subject to anyone comments, you can perhaps make that motion. Uh, does anyone like to opine before we open it up to uh, making a motion in, on this matter? We've spent I, quite a time on it. It's I, I do also agree that the lot has not been properly developed. Uh, I think there there could be improvements made to the to the building in the foreground. It should be moved up, rebuilt, whatever it is. I just don't think that this is a desirable use of this particular property okay so what we have before us now is not the front but the back no i know that i know that but i just think it's not being properly developed the whole lot okay understood i guess you were one of the members here on back in um but it was approved and that's not before us what's before us is the uh, yeah, i know so if no one else wants to make a comment you're prepared to make a motion is all you're saying does anyone else the comments stand Laura, yeah, uh, my only comment is that um, I think you know we granted the fourplex in anticipation of where the city was going. Um, I think that makes it made sense. It makes sense. Um, you have to put a, a limit on this somewhere, and you know the the line has been drawn at five units. I think it's way too premature to exceed that line at this point, given that we don't even have final and binding on the new bylaw. Okay, I mean, so are you prepared to? Someone about to oh, make a motion to refuse. Okay, thank you. And I'm happy to second that motion. Okay, all in favor? It's unanimous. The application will refuse. Thank you, Mr. Cronus. Uh, thank you, Mr. Folds. I take it uh, you may not be the Folds and we're Folds or any relation. Uh, anyway, thank you for everyone for your input, and I trust uh, we've given it a lot of time and thought, and uh, that's our decision. Thank you, Mr. Cronus. Next application then is item number 25 A and B. It's not, it's, uh, I guess, to maintain the existing buildings on both A and B. Um, it's, to, it's uh, we have a draft R plan and a cover letter uh, on this matter. So I guess it's a technical uh, uh, severance uh, to establish, uh, reestablish pre existing lot line between 889 and 891. And the speaker on this application is Michael uh, Testaguza. Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, so I'll I'll be brief in my comments, and uh, you know it is a bit of an odd application, um, but it is just a technical severance uh, to reestablish lot lines. The variances come as a result of the front yard setback being decreased, um, as transportation staff would like a road widening um, to accommodate uh, the technical severance. So the buildings aren't moving, the setbacks aren't physically changing on the ground. We're just talking about a fact that the lot line is being um, moved over to accommodate transportation's request for a widening. So um, I'm happy to answer any questions on it, but I don't want to belabor the point. Yeah, I think, is there urban forestry condition of some sort of payment in lieu? Payment in lieu, it's the third condition. Okay. Great. Okay. Any questions, uh, members, for Mr. Testaguza, or someone ready for a motion? Mr. Kamark? Uh, I'd like to move approval subject to the forestry condition three. Okay. Thank you. Seconder for that. Ms. Alderson, thank you all in favor. It's unanimous. You have your approval. Thank you, sir. Thank you, members of the committee. Have a good afternoon. And you too. Uh, item 26 A and B, uh, similar type application. It's to obtain consent to sever 180 Queens Drive into two lots. Only one minor variance is required for the undersized lot to be conveyed. And uh, 
we have the materials before us. Uh, the speaker is Gus Scar Scarlatakis, the agent for the applicant or part owner applicant. As well, we have two other speakers, uh, residents in 190 Queens Drive, 175 King Street, subject to confirmation by staff, Olivia, that they yep, are in fact they're both on the line. line. Okay, so we have three speakers. So let's hear from um, Mr. Scarlatakis. Oh, we do have on this application just a cover letter, Arbor's report, uh, engineering construction services. Heritage has conditions of approval and the letters of concern from 175 King Street and sure. 106 Queens Drive. Okay, welcome, sir. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I'm clear. Okay, good afternoon. So my name is Gus Garlitagas. I'm part of the ownership group and will be speaking for the application for 180 Queens Drive. Uh, at any point during my presentation, please interrupt me with any questions or pause me for clarification. Uh, on my own, I plan to require less than five minutes to complete my presentation. Let me start with a top-down approach. The neighborhood has plenty of mixed residential dwellings from multiple high-rise towers along Jane Street and along Weston to gentrifying single-family homes on large lots such as ours being exactly half an acre in size with most other nearby lots smaller many being smaller than the zoning minimum it really is a diverse mix of housing and lot sizes the subject property is located just east of the core of weston village notably across the street from the high school and across the street from a sixplex focusing more on the subject property which was purchased last year from the Jones family, a very nice Greek family who owned the property for over 70 years since the 50s. The property has listed heritage status as of December 2021, which we like and knew of and appreciate. We have the full support and friendship of the Jones family with respect to this particular application, and we continue to keep in pleasant contact with the Jones family. Key details, we are applying to sever a 370 square meter portion of the highly underutilized half acre subject property to create a new lot to support a new dwelling to house up to two larger families. The retained lot will have zero variances. The newly created lot will only have one site specific variance, that being a minor two meter lot frontage variance. This being to the satisfaction of the City of Toronto planning staff the newly created lot does not have a lot area variance. Its other minor variances relate to platform, FSI, front yard setback, and one of the side yard setbacks, which requires a mere 30 centimeters of relief. These other variances, when taken in the context of the application as a whole, are, in my opinion, quite minor in nature and generally constitute very good planning. Regarding the FSI, the, prof the proposed home is a modest 2,400 square foot two-story construction, nicely fitting the neighborhood and smaller than its immediate neighboring dwellings. The basement unit serves the city immensely well in providing much needed high quality extra housing options should the, that option be exercised by the current or future owners. Regarding the singular side yard setback variance, Many of the nearby homes do not comply with the challenging 1.2 meter side yard setback. So this would not be out of the ordinary. It would actually be ordinary. Uh, plus the retained lot, its dwelling sits over 20 feet away from the relevant lot line. Uh, moving over to the correspondence, we have engineering comments, a letter from Sean Wren, development engineering. I've read the letter in full and I note that, quote, transportation services has no concerns end quote. Furthermore, I'm fine with their two conditions listed in the recommendation section, and I do appreciate their advisory comments. City planning. During the preceding months, we endeavored to satisfy the requests of city planning staff via dozens of emails and phone calls, cumulatively leading to multiple variances being reduced, and city planning to declare in writing, quote, community planning has no further concerns, end quote. Arborist report, urban forestry. Back in 2022, we engaged an arborist to assess and study the impacts to all the trees. In summary, only one private tree in poor to fair condition is requested to be removed as well. 
As for the one condition number two from the urban forestry chart, yes, we're okay with that one condition. Heritage staff report. It is important to note that we intend to, to preserve and restore the actual heritage dwelling uh, located on the retained lot, and we are fine with their four recommendations. Okay. Finally, uh, just if I may, the two letters of concern or support, these two letters that as of this morning, that's all I could see in the uh, document file. The two letters came in from neighbors at uh, 175 King Street, Octavia Cumberbatch and Charles Winder. This was labeled as a support letter. They noted four concerns. One, closeness. The new structure will be about 90 centimeters to the lot line. I presume they mean the property line that we share. And their garden should be just fine. Uh, number two, forest-like setting. As noted earlier, only one private tree belonging to us will be removed. The rest will be protected as required. Uh, number three, garages acting as a pseudo fence. We're happy and willing to construct a new fence on the property line to the height and privacy of their preference in code compliance, provided it is uh, tasteful from a design build perspective. Severance, yes, our application is only for one severance. The second letter is from 166 Queens Drive from a Paul Lewicki. We will endeavor to build cleanly and respectfully. We've built new houses before. We're also the closest house to the job site as we are retaining 180 Queens Drive, which is a fourplex with our tenants. Also with respect to the letter, the grass was cut yesterday and our landscapers pushed back last week's cutting due to the holiday and schedule scheduling. About about the city road and water line work over the past three years, I'm sorry, uh, these these things do happen. I don't think the last two points have much connection to the merits of this application. Uh, and lastly, Paul, we, we do care about our neighbors. Thank you all for your time. Okay, thank you, sir, for that very uh, uh, good presentation. I think we needed to understand what was going on. So the retained lot, uh, part one, five variants, new build, modest home part two you're retaining you're okay with all the conditions imposed by ecs by heritage so any questions uh from mr kumara and then we'll hear from two, the two questions if i may one pertains yeah. to front yard setback the other to parking um the front, if you were to shift the new property to back to reduce the front yard setback would you be creating a rear yard setback variance Yes, Stan, thank you for that point. It is only because of the very unique placement of the two neighboring properties that this calculation has even led to this variance. Our home, our proposed home, is 8.2 meters from the lot line, which is- the lot line, okay. Yes, uh, to comply, <laughs> we would, yeah. I'm good. Okay. Um, Further to your second question, uh, well, regarding second, parking, I haven't asked a full second question, if I may. First, right now, the existing garages, I'm assuming, um, provide parking to the tenants, or they do not. They do. They do. So, what's going to happen to the tenant parking on the retained lot? Yes, according to the site plan, if if you may notice that the current uh, asphalt leading to the garages will be retained and will be repurposed to provide multiple surface parking spots uh, without tandemness and allowing for most likely five to six private parking spots retained on the retained oh, lot. Perfect. I didn't notice that. That's very creative. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Okay, any other questions or let's hear from the neighbors? Okay, the first neighbor is uh, from 19 on my sheet, 190 Queens Drive. Tony. Yes, hello. One moment, one moment, please. I apologize for the PA system. I'm at work. So, yes, my name is Tony Chivikino, owner of 190 Queens Drive. I'm uh, east of the um, property in question. Uh, it was great to hear Gus's voice. Uh, and Gus, thank you for cutting the grass. Uh, I just want to say that, um, you know, when the 180 Queens Drive group purchased this property over a year ago, I think they knew what they were getting into in regarding the historical designation of the house. Uh, Weston has long been since uh, uh, an area where, 
you know, heritage is very important to the residences. That's why we decided to stay in Weston 22 years ago when we bought 190 Queens Drive. Um, the land used for the house at the time, like I truly believe that the house designation does not just complement the house, it also complements the property. That's the basis of my presentation. Uh, as much as we need housing in the Toronto area, I truly believe that there are three other properties in the area that including my own, which, uh, you know, it's important, it's important to keep the heritage and the land size as is along with the house that is designated historical. As regards to the variances that Gus just presented, um, if they are and have been used already in the area, my wife and I are okay with the, the, the building of the new dwelling. If the variances that are being asked are have not been used in the area, then we would disagree that we don't want a president to occur. And in regards to the arborist report, um, you know, they have two replacement trees in the back. We understand that the city of Toronto's plan of, you know, a canopy buildup, but uh, they've uh, allocated uh, an iron, an ironwood and, uh, an, and a different type of maple tree. It doesn't come to mind the replacement. We would prefer evergreens rather than deciduous trees because uh, we have dealt with the extreme uh, problem of collecting everybody else's leaves. Uh, we have a pool in that area. So I would prefer if there could be a different uh, situation where those replacement trees, either they're evergreens or placed somewhere else. Okay, and well, we're urban forestry, we'll deal, we don't deal with, uh, you know, it's subject to urban forestry condition and I guess the site plan control, whatever they're gonna be planting, but you can discuss that with uh, privately with, uh, with the applicant, I guess. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. Uh, that's all I really have to say. Um, uh, and thank you very much. So you're basically in support. You said something about if the if the variances have been granted. Like first of all, we every application is unique. This is a unique application. Yes. And, you know, keeping them for heritage property. So don't worry about creating precedents. I think you said something about you're okay as long as you're not. It's something that hasn't been granted. You wouldn't want to create. Yes. Can I get a custodian to report to room 107 with the key, please? Yes, I, I do. I do have a concern because you know my property is a quarter of an acre, and you know I can build another property. I, I can build another house on my property, on the east side. Um, but you know, um, you know, severing the land, and I mean, to me, it it really comes down to whether you, the committee of adjustment, feel that the historical designation of this property warrants the land that it sits on, the complete land, the totality of the land, you know, it, if you don't feel that that's important for our area, so be it. Uh, as, as in regards to the new dwelling that Gus and his group want to build, uh, yes, if the variances have not been used in the area, then I don't think, I don't think, you know, you should consider, uh, okay, well, you know, I don't know whether yeah. that's important or not. Anyway. Okay, that's a bit of a big, we're, we're not in, we look at the application, we're not granting variance, we're granting this application. Sure. As you, it provides a new lot with a new house, creates more housing in the city. Yes, I uh, understand that. And, and city planning is in, is, is in favor, they're not opposed to this. Sure. Uh, felt that the remaining lot was too small or that the remaining, the retained on the house is too small for the house. We've had other applications like that where they've, try to make the property with the heritage house too small and there doesn't seem to be that concern here but um thank you for your comments okay thank your, you very much for everything you're in support thank you thank, you. thank you. you any questions for don't don't go away anywhere uh does anyone else have any questions for mr uh Civicino? and if not we're going to go on to hear from uh, Ms. Ms. cumberbatch at uh, 175 king Okay, so let's hear from uh, Mrs. Cumberbatch. Octavia, I have unmuted you. Hello. 
Uh, Charles, are Hello. you going to be the one speaking? Yes, it's Charles Winder from 175 King Street. I'm the owner of the property. Okay, welcome, sir. Thank you. Um, my property shares the northern boundary with uh, the subject property 180 Queens Drive. And um, just a, off the top, there is a notice issue. And I'd love to be able to share um, some photos I have, but the the signage on 180 Queens Drive is not visible from the street. They've uh, erected the signs behind a large hedge, so there really isn't any visibility uh, informing the community of the uh, of the notice and of this meeting today. Uh, in addition to that, uh, for some reason, uh, our house as well as neighboring properties did not receive written notice. I actually found out about this meeting through neighbors. So you didn't receive your, you, I take it you're with my notification area. You're saying you didn't receive notice in the mail and that you feel that the sign, and I assume that the applicant signed the sign declaration, they posted the sign and often sometimes we do hear that it's, it's not required to be uh, 10 feet by 10 feet. So if it's posted, it's posted unless we've, uh, I assume they've signed the staff, they've signed the declaration. Uh, in terms of the written notice, you are here, but you're saying you didn't get notice in the mail, which is surprising. I'm, my my concerns are for the other neighbors uh, in the community, and maybe I didn't make myself clear. The signage is erected, but it is behind hedges. Uh, I have photos to share, um, which would show the fact that from the street, you cannot see the signs. Okay, so those concerns are noted. I guess perhaps we'll deal with them all in the end. Can you now let us know what your uh, substantive objection is to these this uh, this application? Absolutely. So um, my family and the Jones family have been neighbors for my lifetime, over sixty years. Um, we've uh, shared the property. So the northern boundary is. Um, something unique in that um, Elsie essentially handed over the uh, maintenance of the back of her garage uh, as well as the uh, area behind that garage to me. So I actually have, with her permission, um, I rebuilt the back of her garage, put in eaves troughs, as well as uh, affixed um, electrical lights, uh, outdoor lights, again, all with Elsie's permission and uh, her full knowledge. This was done well over 20 years ago. We um, put in um, some chicken wire. We dug trench and um, put in chicken wire along the 40 feet of garage uh, because there's a, a skunk problem. And we uh, we worked together on uh, getting rid of raccoons and rats and other things that uh, most neighborhoods in Toronto uh, need to deal with. Um, so, okay, sir, sir, that's all very interesting, but we have a limited amount of time. We need to know what your if you have concerns with the planning I'm, issue I'm, I'm, to the new property. I I'm, think I heard him say he already is going to build a fence for you. Yeah, I'm happy to hear that he's going to build a yeah. fence. There are other issues. I'd be very happy to sit down with the uh, ownership group and discuss those. Um, the concern is just the size of the lot. We've got a 30 foot lot. There are no houses fronting on Pine Street between Queens Drive and King Street. There's just Elsie's house or the new ownership, 180 Queens Drive, and my property. Um, this would not be consistent with the uh, the historical and, and heritage component of the community. Uh, the 30-foot lot is go it's going to be very difficult to accommodate the tree line. There's talk about one tree being removed. Again, I have pictures uh, to show there are trees on my property, including a 40 foot blue spruce that uh, should be taken into concern. But again, the, the 30 foot frontage, uh, I don't believe that leaves enough room. Uh, I would be much happier with an application that saw 40 feet. So we have enough room uh, along the property line to accommodate the trees uh, and the um, the characteristics of the this part of Weston this part of the, the community. If, uh, again, more pictures to share if you'd like to see them. Yes, sir. You, I don't think we have any pictures as part of your submission. You keep talking about pictures, but I guess you didn't file them in time. So uh, we're unable to see any pictures that you seem to be referring to. So there's, you no, like there's no we can't, 
we can't see pictures from you because you didn't submit them as part of your application. Um, in any event, can you just wrap, you have a sort of running out of time, so if you could just wrap up and I'll have uh, the uh, agent will respond to, uh, to what you have to say. Well, again, you know, the 30 foot frontage, in my opinion, is far too narrow and it just leads to the possibility of further applications uh, turning the property into five or six properties, which would be, you know, that, that wouldn't be acceptable to the neighborhood at all. Okay. Okay. Uh, any questions, uh, members, for, uh, for the speaker? Uh, could, I, could I just add, though, uh, I think what Mr. Winder is saying is very um, telling. Um, the Heritage Conservation District is not here representing this this particular application. They're not here um, opposing it, which leads me to believe that proper notice was not given to the neighbors. Um, I also uh, know this property. There is a large hedge around the front, so if the notice was excuse me was posted in the front of the house, no one could see it. I, I would agree with Mr. Winder that there probably is a notice issue, which is why the councillor hasn't sent in a letter uh, opposed to this application. Heritage Conservation is not here. So I, I really do think there is some basis for, for this uh, complaint. And okay. uh, I, just wanted to, I just wanted to add that. Can we have a check if there was the, you can usually tell us if there's been notice or not. Um, we haven't heard Mr. Uh, staff. Um, I have had the staff confirm that notice was sent to, um, Mr. Uh, Winder at 175 King Street. Uh, that's what the poll report indicates. And uh, the, the signage, there, there are pictures in the um, in the file. And sorry, I'm just getting a, a, another response. Um, as a yes, note- I, I guess I'm just wondering why Heritage Conservation District is not, has not sent a representative to this, well, to this uh, hearing. What well, we do have um, heritage comments. Report, right? I, I know yeah, that heritage heritage planning has weighed heritage. in. Yes, mm -hmm. I know that. But Her the heritage conservation district and they are very active have not weighed in at all, which is quite surprising. Okay. Well, do you want to make a motion to defer this? If, uh, if there's this concern, uh, I um uh, I don't feel I don't feel comfortable uh, proceeding uh, with it on that basis, and I think Mr. Winter has uh, has uh, you know made some very valid comments. Uh, so is this heritage memo the same department that uh, Ms. Alderson is speaking about, or there's a separate uh, heritage it's a separate uh, conservation local... district? Is there's there a, a separate Western uh, Heritage Conservation District, yes. So uh, it, there seems to be some issue here. I'm uh, first of all, we're in the middle of hearing this. We have our second. We haven't had a chance to let Mr. The applicant do his rebuttal, which is unfair. So perhaps if you want to table the issue of whether this yeah. should be heard at the end. Uh, yeah, we can do this. Who sure. is here and who is not Sorry. here, who has weighed in and who hasn't weighed in, and the suspicion of that. Um, in the meantime, staff is checking to see who, in fact, received actual notice and whether the sign, you know, we often have that situation. Oh, Mr. Talking. Chair, we just have not a picture part. of the uh, signage uh, on the screen. So if um, if staff at the uh, in the chamber can share a screen and, and show the picture, please. It, it is a little concerning because it looks like it's um, a, a rear lane. Um, there's a, a little shed with a cantilevered uh, roof, and uh, this does not look like Queen's Drive. Um, but those are the two signs that are, are in the file. Okay, thank you for that. So I think uh, we now we'll go back now to uh let the applicant respond to the concerns of the two neighbors plus the issue about the notice and the signage and councillor and the local heritage district uh, and give him the opportunity to respond to that and then the members can make whatever motion they wish even though we normally deal with deferrals at the outset but in this case since we've heard some issues about deficiencies in notice and and uh, perhaps this is some some people may want to the departments have not weighed in that perhaps uh, it's, it would be expected to on a property such as this okay so let's go back to um uh forget it, miss, uh, mr scarlatis uh to respond to all of that so thank you uh uh thank you michael i'd like to first mm, discuss the notice issue 
the hedges are private and public hedges surrounding the entire property. The placement of these signs is undoubtedly the best location for these two signs. They are less than one meter away from our driveway. We could not hammer the stakes into the driveway. They are high. They're on two by fours. They're over a meter off the ground. They're as per the signage posting requirements. They were done well ahead of time. Uh, they are the concrete that you see is our driveway. And in my opinion, aside from placing them on the private city boulevard, there is no better location for these signage. In fact, they are mere one or two meters away from the property line. Many signage posters would post the property signage 5, 10, 15. I had the opportunity to post 10, 20 meters from the property line. No, I did not. I had them posted a couple of meters, basically one or two meters from the lot line. They're very close to the sidewalk. And uh, I think the sign posting is, is very well done. I'm, I'm, you know, there are hedges, uh, but uh, this is shocking and surprising to me that the notion of a deferral is even brought up on this premise. I reached out to Heritage Department, the City of Toronto Heritage Department, many months ago, and they had no concerns because, quite simply, we are not impacting the Heritage home. This has nothing to do with the heritage dwelling. Of course, heritage planning made their comments in their report, and we are in agreement with those concerns, namely to have the archaeologist uh, and all of the preconditions, the four conditions which we agreed to. Uh, next issue, with respect to uh, Mr. Winder repeatedly mentioning 30 feet, it's actually 33 feet, uh, not inconsequential, and to the satisfaction of City of Toronto planning. The other issue was that um, there is uh, uh, the notice about the letter not being received well. Um, Octavia did submit a letter a week ago, and because the property is half an acre in size, it would stand to reason that perhaps some of the other properties are not getting notices because of the size of these properties. You know, if you have a higher density of smaller lots, there'll be more notices. But the, again, this is the first I've heard of any notice. I don't know why uh, they did not receive their notice, if it was sent in the mail or not, but they're aware of it. They're well aware of it. And uh, I appreciate their their comments. Um, the The fact that Mr. Winder is uh potentially disappoint disappointed with the non-continuing use of our land uh is perhaps leading to uh the realization that uh maybe um the, 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 this is going to come to an end unfortunately but uh uh this is probably uh to be expected and uh the right thing to do i mean this is our land. I would like to note that Mr. Winder's shed is much closer to the lot line than our proposed new dwelling. Uh, I would also like to mention that the um, arborist report is thorough and covers any areas of the trees that he uh, mentioned. And I would just like to circle back to the to the to the signage issue, and um, would like to. Uh, note that it was provided to a Mr. Adam Wills, the technician, the, the photo was provided. Two images were provided for scale, not just one image, uh, a close up plus a further shot from the sidewalk. And there were no issues at that time. So to have this come up now is uh, concerning and surprising. Okay, thank you, sir. Any uh, follow up questions? Um... For Mr. Uh, for the applicant, or even any of the neighbors, I note that the uh, neighbors Octavia's letter doesn't appear to have a date on. It. I don't know when the city uh, city received them. In any event, the, the applicant signed a uh, statutory declaration. He sent it in to the technician. Um, the 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 neighbors are here. We heard from another neighbor as well. Um, that's just what I feel. Any other questions or comments? And uh, I guess we have to take this in. In terms of 
the fact that heritage they he made a very good point he's keeping this house they should be very happy and perhaps the money they make from selling the other lot or developing the other lot will give them the money for this heritage property so maybe it's a win-win um it's change so that's just my comment anyone else would like to weigh in it might uh, with very well be a win-win it yeah. might very well be a win-win and i'm not um, i guess my concern is with the notice and the way it was placed on the property it was pla placed basically facing the barrage and facing no. south no right right on the driveway no it was, it was facing it was facing it was, pine street that's not the way it looks to me but anyway on the on the photograph I think no, it was facing Pine Street, 100%. So it wasn't facing the driveway facing south? It's facing west. If anything, it would be facing, to be most accurate, it would be facing west-southwest okay. on a slight angle. So a it's very slight angle. The, west. the driveway is due west. The signage is facing west-southwest. It has a, a, a slight southern angle to the signage. To accommodate the hedges and to allow if it was facing due west perpendicular it so would be you're worse saying is it's, it's very visible to the street and to anyone walking by on the sidewalk is that what you're saying absolutely anybody pine walking street. on pine street anybody walking on pine street sees those two signs if they look in that direction unfortunately anybody walking on queen's drive which to be fair is not the key uh road here the key emphasis is on pine street because this is where the proposed new dwelling would be that's where the new dwelling will be yes 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 so I, I thought it would be prudent to place the signage in the most uh uh prominent location on the proposed new lot and also obviously on 180 queens drive however you can't see it from 180 queens drive i mean yeah, maybe yeah. there should be a stipulation. Look, if you've got a half acre lot, if you've got a half acre corner lot, maybe you got to put up two signs. I think if, if you're on a key lot, I think that's kind of incumbent on you to do that. Yes. But mm, anyway, it was, not, it was not incumbent upon me, actually. I'll get two signs. Anyway, well, there, are two, I don't there know. are two signs right there. So, he's, yeah, he's, so he's, one of them could have been placed on, on Queen's Drive. Well, uh, the other thing is, did you ever reach out to the local Western Heritage Conservation District about this application? Mr. Michael Clark hit it bang on. We need some money to help restore the old beauty. And this will help. Uh, they have no concerns. They should have no concerns. We will be doing archaeological dis digging. The existing fourplex is a beauty and we cherish and we will re restore and help. It needs a lot of a lot of money. It hasn't, aside from the boiler, it has not seen any major restorative work in in decades. It is in rough shape and we are we have we have uh, permit building permit renovation building permit applications on the go. Simply we don't have the money. We have applied to the city for some energy efficiency grant money, which we were successful in getting. So it is clear to you and all at the city that we are keenly interested in restoring the actual heritage dwelling. Not, you know, I wouldn't say that taking uh, a 15% chunk of this half acre lot does any damage or does any risk. On the contrary, this is in the best interests of the heritage dwelling, in my opinion. I'm not suggesting that it doesn't need some te some tender love at this point. The the building does need some some money thrown at it. Absolutely. I, I just asked that question. You would make a great politician. You never really answered that question for me, but that's that's fine. Um, I, you know, I, I'm 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 uh, I'm finished. Thank you. Thank you. Does anyone uh, have any remaining questions or comments, or someone like to weigh in with a motion, Mr. Mark. Yeah, just some comments, um, maybe questions, but I think the issue of, yeah, it would be nice to create a larger lot than 33 feet, but if you did that, then I'm assuming it would impact the retained lot and would create variances on the retained lot. It also would then impact your ability to keep the parking, which I think is very clever because a lot of people now just say, well, we don't, I don't have to provide parking, so I won't. Yeah. And I think that's a bit of a cop out. And I think what I like about this proposal is that you're keeping the parking on the retained lot and you're keeping the landscaping 
the front lawn and the side lawn around the heritage property, which retains its impact as a heritage property. Um, I'm assuming if we make that lot, the, the part one larger, then you get variances on part two. Is that correct? Uh, Mr. Kamarik, we, we, we do need the uh, 20 some odd, 22 some odd feet of asphalt width to allow for the free flowing of the vehicles. So imagine it that's as That's what I'm saying. That's why I think yes. it's a good, that's we, why I think well, this is a great solution. Correct. And, and planning staff is totally on board with this. In fact, yeah. they agreed and okayed with the 10 meter. Uh, there are numerous properties nearby, like extremely close, that are six meters, seven meters, yeah. eight meters, nine meters. And we are at 10 meters. Um, we've already bumped that up. Our initial application uh, was slightly less than 10 meters. And at the bequest and, 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 and the, and the, and the uh, suggestion of planning, we gave them the 10 meters that they wanted and we presumed case closed. As for the retained lot, yes, so we have two lanes. One lane, it's going to be like a two wide asphalt and it goes right to the end, 120 feet. So you can uh, park five to six cars wonderfully on the left side and then the right side is wide open. So for vehicles to come in and out, in and out. So they'd have to drive in and then parallel park and that can accommodate easily five to six, five, five parking spots at a minimum, uh, all on private property. And we need that parking. If we, if we lose even two, three feet, you're compromising things. You're, you're squishing things. You're contributing to a future. And to what benefit? I just, I think the 33 foot wide property with no setbacks, like there is no side yard setback on that particular lot line. So why give more than a 1.2 meter setback? Why bomb the 1.2? You don't need to respect? convince me. I'm just I'm yeah. just trying to make the point to the other members. Okay, Very well, it's it's uh, obviously that's the obligation you came in with. It seemed to be good. You gave it great thought. You and you've maintained this heritage property, and I was saying heritage doesn't have a problem because you're not touching it. We can improve it at some point. Mm -hmm. So waiting for a motion so we can move on, and uh, we spent a lot of time on this. So uh, I mean, I guess we need to. Have a motion on on the table. I'll uh, move approval of the uh, consent and the related um, variances, subject to forestry condition two, subject to the two sorry the four heritage conditions, mm -hmm. subject to the usual ECS uh, conditions of consent. Thank you, sir. I have a seconder for that motion. I'll second. Ms. Busty, thank you. All in favor? Opposed? The motion carries four to one. The application is approved with Ms. Alderson dissenting. Thank you uh, to the applicant and to the neighbors uh, for your participation in this matter. And we can now move on to item number 27. The three remaining items are all previous deferrals. This one was a deferral from March 27, 2017. That's what we'd like to hear about that. Uh, 42 Beckett Avenue. Um, it's to construct a one story rear addition, a new rear deck, a new covered front porch, a new one story west side addition, which will contain an attached garage. And there are seven variances. Uh, planning has given us a report for information. TRC has no objection, but there are post approval conditions. And we have the material from the previous hearing. I guess when it was deferred uh, like six years ago. Uh, the speaker on this application is um, Stephen Giordano. Hey there, Stephen Giordano here. Um, address is 602 Winona Drive, Toronto, Ontario. I'm the agent for the homeowners of 42 Beckett Avenue. Okay, so this application is out of typo. It was back in 2017. No, that's correct. Um, so I could give a brief history on that. So 2017, this file came to the committee for an addition to the existing bungalow. Um, it was deferred from that previous, so there was a previous designer on this file. It wasn't us, we came in after the fact. Um, so the previous designer submitted the application, he came to the hearing and at the hearing, that's when they were notified that TRCA has jurisdiction on this property. Um, and in doing so, TRCA outlines um, quite specific 
uh, square footage requirements of pro new proposed habitable areas to this property because it is in a high uh, flood zone area. So the file was deferred to uh, consult with TRCA. Um, at this time, the homeowner um, parted ways with that previous designer. Um, a few other designers came in, uh, the application didn't progress from there. And then we were involved where we consulted with TRCA. Uh, we revised the plans in accordance with their uh, requirements. Uh, we went through their process first, just to make sure everything complied before we came back to the committee. So with the revised plans, the additions are still the um, side garage addition, the rear habitable addition, and the front and rear deck. Um, so we, we obtained the approval from TRCA to go on with the variance hearing, um, which is where we're here now. Uh, in addition, uh, when we re received the new um, zoning review, there is an MTO uh, permit zone. We consulted with MTO as well and confirmed there is no no requirements on this property. Okay. Then we also have in the additional materials a rendering of before and after. Correct. Uh, very helpful. Okay. So anyway, it's been a long. And it's funny, the staff report is a really straight, it doesn't really say why we're getting a report for information. Um, and it doesn't at all mention the fact that uh, there was any previous iteration here. But okay, any questions for um, Mr. Giordano or someone ready for a motion? Stan? Yeah, I'm good with the motion if no one else has any uh, comments. Um, I believe um, we're meeting the four tests in this application and would like to move approval uh, with no conditions. Okay, thank you. Seconder for that. Sophia Ruddick, thank you. All in favor? Unanimous approval. Thank you, Stephen. Have a great afternoon. Application has been approved. We'll move on to item number 28, deferred from February 9, 2023, 16 Heather Glen Road. Uh, this is to construct a one-story attached garage. There are three variances. Planning has a condition of approval to be constructed uh, as illustrated on the site plan regarding the south side yard setback. And we have the material from the previous hearing, and that's all we have. Speaker is Nelson Espinola. Yes, very good afternoon, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. Uh, Nelson here as the agent for this application. Okay, so very straightforward. This matter was deferred. Uh, to, uh, any, can you uh, remind us why this was deferred back in February? Yes, it was deferred so that we could work with the planning department uh, with regards to the minor variances. So okay. we have eliminated uh, uh, a variance uh, with regards to the rear yard setback. We have eliminated a variance with regards to building length, and we also reduced the, um, uh, I'm sorry, uh, we eliminated the variance in regards to building depth, and we reduced the variance in regards to length from 19.29 to 17.46. Okay, and you have support, the uh, supporting material picture, and as well, you've given us a uh, support letter from 18 and 14, both adjacent neighbors. That's correct, yes. Okay. Uh, members, any questions for uh, Mr. Espinola? Or is someone ready for uh, a motion? And there is the planning condition. Ms. Um, McCluskey? There's no questions. Happy to um, make a motion to approve the application. Um, very straightforward. Um, I guess that's subject to the planning condition, which ties it to the site plan. Thank you. Seconder for Ms. McCluskey's motion. Ms. Reddick, thank you. All in favor? Unanimous approval. Thank you, Mr. Espinola. You have your application has been approved. And we can now move over to our last application of the afternoon, Team Curry Lane. This was deferred from the March 23rd, 20th hearing. It's for a um, construct a new dwelling with an attached garage. It doesn't say detached, but it's a new dwelling. Uh, I guess the bylaw, we have uh, five variances. There's a cover letter. We have the material from the previous hearing and urban forestry is looking to deny variance three. I can read three and four, reading my writing. 
And the speaker is uh, Argamiro Neto. Argamiro Neto. Yes, I'm here. Uh, I'm Argamiro Neto from Barrow Group, and I'm the agent for 15 Judy Lane. Okay, so this matter was deferred back in uh, March. Why do you want to? Uh, what was the reason for the deferral? Were you working with community planning or? Yes, so since the application deferred on March 23rd, I have been making changes and I got the approval from the planners. Okay. We also redesigned a driveway to eliminate the one of the urban first comment. Okay. So what's with her? What is urban forestry looking for here? Did I see a note here about uh, we have something March 23rd? Yes. So the two previous comments was one. Uh, let me just look at my notes here. So, I have a yeah. so has that been resolved? Sorry, which one? Has the problem that urban forestry had back in March? Yes, that has been resolved. Okay. Because I see they're not in the new application they didn't have a concern yes so that has been resolved same with the planners concerns okay okay uh members any questions for uh mr netto or somebody for motion mr kumarik yeah i i'm good with the motion i believe the uh Application meets the four tests and uh, would like to move approval with no conditions. Thank you. Seconder for that uh, motion by Mr. Kamarik. Uh, friendly amendment. Doesn't CP have one condition? Who? CP? Oh, community planning? Community planning, yeah. No, uh, in, the, in the additional materials, they say they that said they, they didn't. Yeah, okay. Disregard previous submitted report. Okay, thanks, Stan. I'll I'll second that motion. Okay, all in favor? Okay, it's unanimous. You have your approval. Thank you, Mr. Neto. Thank you. Now we need just a motion to uh, adjourn at 3.40 p.m. I'm happy to make that motion always. Okay, thank you, Laura. And seconded by Sophia. And uh, thank you, everyone. Thank you, staff. Thank you, Phil. Thank and you. Thank you, panel members. And thank you, staff. Yeah. Staff, as always, we'll see you next time. Have a Take good care. weekend. Have a good thank weekend. You. It's supposed to be beautiful. Yeah, enjoy. Thank you. Bye, guys.